takes a minute to prep. And, and we are live. Beanie blessings and welcome to Deadpan Dope Tuesdays with me, Deadpan Lindsay the Beanie God. This is being recorded on Facebook and we put on our YouTube page later. If you don't want to be seen or heard, welcome to Deadpan Dope Tuesdays. Please uh, mute yourself and turn your camera off if you don't want to be seen or heard. Um, and also please mute yourself um, when um, when other artists are performing out of consideration for them. For those who don't know me, I'm an artist among other professions. Uh, a few ground rules, no hate speech or bullying. If I hear any of that or see that tonight, you'll get the boot, no questions asked. This is a safe space uh, for everyone. Like me, many of us have parallel careers and are here to unwind after a long day. So please leave the crappy attitudes and beef behind before entering our space. I don't believe in content or trigger warnings, but if you feel the need to give one, please do so. Each artist will have four minutes to perform. We are gonna to start tonight with an open mic and then we are gonna go into our feature, uh, Stephen Blaine, who's with us tonight. And then we'll wrap up with um, a little more open mic and Stephen will take us out with the beanie blessing. If you'd like to perform, please drop your name in the chat and I will add you to my list and I wanna drop the list in the chat right now and if you're not on it uh please let me know all right and i will also announce who's on deck so on deck we have chance on but up to the mic now please welcome from nova scotia i believe um please tell me if i'm pronouncing your name wrong incorrectly forgive me uh baku kemstra bauka bauka Thank you for correcting me. Welcome, Valka. Oh, no problem. Um, so I thought I'd read a poem that I wrote uh, just a little earlier uh, when I took a walk, and I call it Melancholy Stroll. Not sure I remember the way. After all, there never was a map, just a series of conceptual signposts, an institution of intuition or memory. I remember that here, I lean left against the revolution of the clock, follow the scent of lemons spilt, rinds split against pavement, internal juices spilled out of a knife's wound. There was the log boarded fence where the red squirrel had run along, the naked bottom spruce limbs half dead as they shimmied under the slight running weight. But I'd made the right choices. The lake shafting flickered waves of luminance on the underside of needle branches. Having arrived, the only choice remaining was how to get back. And just another quick one here. I call it uh, two times. The wild and star-eyed speed past rude eroded walls, water scars and wind bleed, they scrap like lovers. They climb inside each other, a mist immune to flame, but yet not passion. Suddenly, they go still. Feet lost in the sheer sand. There always were more stars than the darkness held. End poem. That was absolutely lovely. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, Thank you. Welcome to our space. Um, do you have um, anything you'd like to promote coming up? You'd like to let people know where they can find you online? Um, I'm on Twitter at Word, spelled W-Y-R-D-E, and uh, on Facebook uh, under my name, Valka Kamstra. Um, okay, uh, please give... Have any, uh, no, go ahead. No, no, please go and uh, finish what you're going to say. Oh, I was just saying, uh, going to say that I don't have any upcoming books, but I do have a series of four on Amazon called uh, Passion Demands, a Vocabulary of Desire. And uh, my first book, We All Reach the Earth by Falling, if you're interested. Awesome. Well, everyone, please go pick up copies of that. Give them a follow on Twitter and Facebook. And um, thank you for being with us tonight and sharing your lovely... Oh poetry with us being blessings.
my pleasure. Awesome. Uh, thanks yeah. for making me welcome. Yeah, we always welcome positivity and new artists and friends in our space. So thank you so much for being here with us. All right, on deck, we got Tara Sturitson. And up to the mic now, please welcome one of our Word is Right hosts, uh, Chan Sun. Welcome, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. All right, so I have um, three haiku. Is that fine? Absolutely. Okay. Haiku. Wrote her love letters, trying to win her poor heart. Has seemed like a game. Haiku. Can't think of haiku. Those 17 syllables seem to evade me. And last one. I need a hot friend who does hot things just because she is a hot friend. Thank you. Oh, chance, very nice. Chance on is the haiku king. I think. Or have you broken the world record yet, or you're you're close to it? I'm uh I'm about I'm almost thirty percent of the way. I'm at twenty eight sixty eight. So I'm getting there. Oh. Every day you're one closer. Um, congratulations on that. We're very proud of you here in our poetry community. Keep up the great work. Um, always love to hear your haikus and we look forward to hearing you tonight. Do you have anything you want to plug, have coming up? I know you um you uh you host something with the words right here. Yes, I host the Hear Me Cool um haiku workshop every um second and fourth Sundays um here on the word is right. And after September, it'll only be um, once a month. I believe that will be the third um, Sunday, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. And you can find me on, um, let me see, on TikTok, um, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Soul Inc. Speaks. And um, you can also find me on uh, on Amazon, you could find my books on Amazon. So um, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you for being here and supporting our community. Um, um, buy his books on Amazon, please. We have many artists here in Poets Night, um, including myself, who have books out. And speaking of that, on deck, we have uh, Martin Park Lillian, uh, Martin Parker in DC. But up to the mic now, she has a fabulous book out. She's part of our Fierce, Fierce 15 that I'm a part of there. It is the Chameleon Chronicles. Um, I read her book. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm going to see her in a few weeks at the New York City Poetry Festival and our New York and Poets Cafe hybrid. And we've do other with each other over Zoom karaoke. So maybe she'll do um, some Zoom, uh, not Zoom, some karaoke in person with me. It's 80s night is the theme for hybrid with Paul Conqueso. So please welcome to the mic now, my favorite person to sing karaoke with, Terry Rose Jertson. Thank you. Thanks for all the accolades. Um, so I'm practicing up my erotica because I have a feature coming up on Moist Mondays with Marissa Prada. Um, and that's coming up. I believe it's this Monday. <clears throat> so I wrote this piece. This is my newest erotica piece. And it's not, eh, you know, I, I got... I'll just read it. People like it, I think. I think it's got to do with the way I'm reading it. So I need to go. I, I don't know if I'm still on camera right now, but I need to um, go off to read this. Space Nerd Sex. First made visual contact with you, pulled in with your tractor beam, eyes searching for something familiar, heart pounding harder, faster, in my heaving chest, we came closer to being one, anticipating the time. Can't breathe, but somehow still do. Can't talk, so laugh. Can't catch breath, hyperventilate. Oxygen, please. Temperatures reach explosive levels. No time to tease. The mission can't fail. Our orders are to press bodies together to save the human race from extinction, extinguish my flames. I feel a hot rush of a volcano between my legs, screams between gasps, electricity charges, flash, hair standing on end. Your lightning bolt strikes me in the same place twice, thrice. I happily moan, 
thunder claps, rhythmic clapping bodies together. We are going supersonic soul traveling outer space together to the stratosphere, to perilous heights. I open my mouth and let out a sound only dogs can hear. Our energy travels at time warp speed. Your seed planted through our locked lips, down to our hips, steering me. Breasts pressed through your fingertips while giving me sweet face. Your tongue nibbles. Nimble made its rounds around my mound, teaching me the ABCs of pleasure, upper and lower case. My hands clenched in yours as we moon each star. I was from Venus and you were from Mars. I love that. That was so spicy. <laughs> That was, that was like probably one of my favorite poems you ever read, actually. I, really I know. It. This actually was a poem that I had in my books, like one of the first or second journal books that I wrote like about probably a, a year ago or maybe even longer. But uh, I didn't really like expand on it and it needed more, like it wasn't long enough. So I was like, let me just see what I can do with this. And like I turned it into like a space theme, but it didn't have that before. Maybe it's maybe a couple of words in there gave me the idea that this could go that way. So I worked on it like that. Yeah. And so I loved it. And we actually were talking about that at the new last night on our open mic that like sometimes you write a poem and then you take like months or sometimes years um, away from it. like I'm putting a book of proses together right now that's coming out around Christmas. And I haven't touched some of these poems since like 2018. And you know, I'm going back and editing them and just the growth in my writing and the person that I was then and now is different. So it's nice to go back and reflect on your work and, and polish it. But um, it, I really love that one. I hope to hear you again. Or I will, I'll come if I'm around on Monday to your feature from West Mondays, which is here at the Words Right, Marissa Prada, our executive producer, um, if I'm um, at, by my computer. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share in the first round? Uh, you mean another piece? Yeah, we have time. I can do another erotic piece. <laughs> Go for it. I have kitchen erotica, which is a little bit like sterilized because it's kitchen, but we can we can see where that goes. I mean, I'm, I'm here for the kitchen erotica. Kitchen erotica. OK. Uh, I think that's the first one. Hang on a second. Yeah. So this is fairly new too, and it might need work, but this is how it is right now. Kitchen erotica. My kitchen is well equipped with recipes for love. My blender is anxiously awaiting for your milky sustenance to, to froth. My whisk comes in several sizes, depending on the occasion, to beat your cream into a frenzy or stiff peaks, adding the spice cinnamon sweet, the better to taste you. The main course of pleasure, just in time to measure, the spatula flips to turn you over. Plunging in gently, the meat thermometer checks to see if you're done. Turkey baste you until you beg me to come. No, not yet, there's more time left for fun. Squeeze the hot juices out on the skin to keep you wet. Did we start preparing dessert yet? Flatten out the doughy crust to fill it with berry succulents. My fork poking holes into the engorged center to allow it to breathe. Thirst is beginning to overtake us as we drink each other in. Hot juices flow, running to the refrigerator to get some ice. We apply it to our lips to cool the heat and sliding down the most sensitive parts, it melts immediately, dripping down, creating micro pools of water that we lap up with our tongues, quenching our parched throats. The cabinetry tries to contain itself as it continues to watch the pairing, knife through glimpses of the clandestine coupling, catches feelings as the Keurig filled with coffee declared, call me and the teapot not wishing to be left out whistled repeatedly.
Oh, I have a new appreciation for kitchen erotica. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I can never step into, like, you know, there's like a joke between me and Paul Conqueso and Nick about my fridge. And like, now we can never look at the fridge the same ever again. <laughs> we can't. Is it? I loved it. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Please get her book. Uh, the Chameleon Chronicles is available now. It's on uh, iFunzy Moms. You can reach I out to her. iFunny mm -hmm. Moms. You can reach. Uh, one day I'll pronounce it correctly. Um, you can reach out to her there to get a copy. Um, and she, um, she'll be in New York City in a couple weeks at the festival. I so, have to go shop and PayPal. <laughs> yes, please. And yeah, please, um, please do private that. Message. Please message. Yes, please private message her for a copy. It's a fabulous book. I've read it recently. I mean, thank you, Terry. We look forward to hearing more from you later tonight. All right, so on deck, we got Christy Scribbles. And up now, the man who's responsible for my favorite cup to drink my tea out of. He is a DC poet. Please welcome to the mic, uh, Martin Parker. Oh, thank you so much. And pardon me while I go off camera so I can get close enough to see my poetry without just showing in my forehead. Um, speaking of poems that uh, take a long time to write, uh, this one is one I just finished up a few days ago that I started in 1984. <laughs> the first stanza I wrote back then, I've been working on it the last few months and finally came, came together. This is called Tower Dreams. Like butterflies float on silken wings, so beautiful yet frail it seems. Emotions are such fragile things, as is a love that's built on dreams. Just like a wizard in a tower, I cast my spells around about in every hue at every hour. My head was ever in a cloud. When finally I let my ears attune to all the things she really said, I learned she couldn't hear the tune that swirled around within my head. So when we went our separate ways, I found my way to a better rhyme. These memories of earlier days, a distant echo of another time. And then I have another one I don't think I've shared here in my series of uh, childhood crushes. This is actually from kindergarten I'm, where I met someone who also knew how to write cursive, which I was fascinated with. This is called High Rising Moon Child. I kept my innermost fears at bay and sat by you on the bus that day. Drawn in so close by cursive curls, your name inscribed in white wax bright, bright blue that echoed tales of hunter girls seen high on hills beneath the moon. Entranced by those sweet lines you drew, I knew of no one else my age in gardens where we'd head for class along the roads that bus would roam with passion for the forms that words could take when they in groups entwine. Within the plain, a snow white page, we laid it random on the glass that made a table in your home, just down the hill from that of mine, where we would spend an afternoon with loops that freely fall and rise and hand-drawn lines that flew like birds, creating worlds from swirls that gleam like rainbows arching through the skies and rolling rows of words we'd weave until your mom said it's time to leave. Then off you'd fade like a moonlit dream. Like a moonlit dream, that's absolutely stunning. Oh, it's good to hear you again, Martin. Good thank to you see you. Much. Beautiful as always. Um, thank you for sharing with us. Please give him a follow um, where you can buy his books, get his adorable mugs and other um, items at Parquillion on Instagram. Um, do you have anything else coming up you'd like to share? Uh, nothing coming up real soon. Um, just enjoying all these open mics. 
yeah. that I can that I can make it to with my health lately. <laughs> Always happy to have you with us. Thank you so much. We look forward to hearing um, more from you later tonight. Thank All you. right. Um, on deck, we have Christopher Moore, who's also a part of our Word is Right team. But up now to the mic, another member of our Word is Right team. Uh, I can't say enough about how much I love this woman. Um, she does so much for me in my life spiritually and physically and emotionally. So please welcome to the mic and please buy her book, Channeling Moons. It's a gorgeous book. She's a part of the Fierce 15. Um, my sister, Christy Scribbles. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um, and I'm, I'm in a weird mood, but being here always helps. So. Okay, so tonight I, um, you know, I just, I write in my phone a lot and I just went through it and found a couple of pieces that I haven't even reread and um, yeah, here it goes. It's good to see you all. Um, the first one, uh, it's not titled. It ripples, slowly it ripples around my body the body of flesh I sit inside now. It's slow, makes it slowly makes its way around the skin of me that encases the muscle of me, that encases the bone of me, and the truth of the feeling of it weaving its way around me truly astounds me. And around me now as I write this to you, it's up around the back of my head as it slithers around down back once again the stream of the riverbed with the rocks causing bumps into my skin, inside my skin. As the river, it runs and bends and burns, it fucking hurts. And it is so fucking uncomfortable. And it is always there, no matter what the fuck I heal with. Just maybe gets a little shallower or runs a little less cold. But it's there, under the skin, always pulsing around me, just so just so everything looks, looks like it could be the worst day of your life. And that life is always strife and that tomorrow might not come, might get swept down the river of your youth and the mouth of that monster as it now squishes inside the meat sack of me just because you can't see the flowing. It is always around, forever be found inside me inside layers, epidermis encasing it like a child's toy, smushing and sloth, sloshing and running around me encases me, the fear me that tethered me to that river, that night, that lost me, that night, that river me, that night me, that lost me, that lost him, the losing him, the lost him, the forgot him, the drowning him, inside the skin of me forever be a part of that layer me, the liquid me, the melting me, the heart of me. Um, I have one more. Um, it is not titled either. Remember the lake that travels on to forever. The bends and turn, the bends, the turn of the ocean as it stretches on and on and on. And as this life seems to be harder than the hardest, and cruel inside of pain that the time of this, this lifetime, is but only one drip, one drip of a drop that ripples into the water, so flat of calm norm sea. And as the drip drop of rain finds the plain of the plain and the storms erupt into millions of drops that now drip, this time you are living, this heart that is breaking is only one drip in the millions of drops and the billions and trillions of drops left to have and have all and have had already and the reason you are here in the here of the now is that forever is a long time and sitting around stagnant is too boring so we earth and we live and we break and we feel it all and take the lessons of it and to breathe life into it the souls that we are it isn't too far to reach in the forever stars that we sit in. We just live zoomed in. We lived with a narrow view of what surrounds us always, always surrounded with the forever of us, of you, of them, of we. And soon we will be the blip on the lake, 
the surface tension no more and we will head home to assess our progress and see where our event next adventure goes and who knows what it will be right but do know your soul knows that the grow from the heart goes such a long way to forever and such a long way towards your goal that your soul always knows is to grow and to grow and see where we go in the drip of the drop that we are dripping right now it is in the tough times where it feels like it's pouring where you see your true self and how you felt and the why of the cause because who knows why but you're here to be here in the now in the drop inside the drip of you thank you i wish i was a quarter as talented as christy scribbles she's so brilliant everything she brings i loved it there were so many quotables in there uh, she is one of our hosts here at Word is Right. She does, um, is it every second Saturday of the month, The Great Debaters with Marissa Prada, yeah. our executive producer, and she's got her book out, Channeling Moons, right? I got the title. Um, right? No, 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 Sacred Elements of Me. Sorry, I didn't want to correct you. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there is there a poem in the book, Channeling uh, moons? Channeling Moons was my first book I wrote. And it was too oh. long. So then this, that was my second book. <laughs> oh, I apologize. I don't know why channeling moons. I apologize. I feel like a jerk. That's okay. No, That's you're fine. Sacred. Well, I did read her book though, Sacred Elements. It's a gorgeous book um, of me. I'm having a weird mood day too. I can't remember anything. But buy all her books that are available. They're great. She's great. She's brilliant. Thank you for being here with us, Christy. Um, and you can follow her on ig at the poetry alchemist which is a really cool handle um all righty all right so on deck we got shocky and up now is our one of our where's right hosts too he hosts more poetry every uh second and fourth wednesdays of the month so that's next week um please welcome christopher moore uh thank you um Okay, I'll read one or two from a manuscript I'm working on. Um, this one's called Chlorine Baptism. Fill your nostrils with the fluid as you try to stay afloat. Let your eyes finally see the fantasy you thought was your reality. Peacefulness now in the silence that was filled with loud lies and false hopes. You come up finally realizing reality, even though life seems a bit colder. And this next one will be um, the Corazon Company. We charter out to find a prize, the rarest of Corazons, inverted but still survives and pumps well. Whoever captures the Corazon and claims it for their own as they see fit will have prizes and riches she could imagine do not concern yourself with the savage brain though for it is the courtesan that rules over all uh, that's from a manuscript i'm currently working on called august lent which is going to be out later this year and um if i can say if i can just plug more poetry for a minute um as Deadpan Lizzie said, I have a show on the Word is Right every second and fourth Wednesday, 7.30 to 9, uh, more poetry. My next one is next week, the 24th of August at 7.30 Eastern Time. But I recently started something new for my show called Second Features, in which I find a feature and they will be featured every second Wednesday of the month. Um, last week on the 10th, I had my first feature. And for my uh, September feature, which will be on the 14th, which I'll put in the chat, um, I have Elise Versella. I think I'm pronouncing that name right. Um, she will be my feature for 914. And currently, I'm searching for a feature for November 9th and December 14th. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. And you are pronouncing her name correctly, Lisa Priscilla, who's a New Jersey poet. She's also my poetry wife. Okay, um, because the first time I said her last name, someone had to correct me. <laughs> no, as far as I know, is it Priscilla? She's never corrected me. 
So my poetry wife is Elise Priscilla. Uh, she's brilliant. I love her so much. I think I get to see her this weekend at the new block party. Um, and yes, please go to his open mic, More Poetry. It's a great open mic. Uh, he had a feature last week that was lovely. So thank you for being with us, Chris. We'll hear more from you later this evening. Thank you around. And then to round out uh, the first half of our night before we get to our feature uh, is going to be Shaki G, who's in this fabulous anthology of Red or Green Books, Marissa Prada's Press. Um, and look, here she is. Shaki Grant has her beautiful LGBTQ poetry. So please welcome to the mic, Shaki G. Hello. All right. Um, I will do one piece today. It's probably something other people have heard, but it's okay. All right. Once I read a poem so good, she screamed my name called me daddy, circled my tongue around her metaphors and sucked on her stanzas like fresh mango. That poem so juicy sweet dribbled off my lips like a punchline. I had her speaking in haikus and villanelles like, not yet, wait for it. I don't wanna fall in love with you. Did you know a poem could be platonic? She said, girl, I don't believe in monogamy anyway. I always preferred a monologue to a soliloquy. It was too late. I knew right then and there she'd break my heart. Knew I'd never find another poem to make me climax like that. Now I spend all my time writing new poems. Cadences all wrong, words misspelled. Thought if I could just get a poem naked, I would forget the taste of that first poem. Have you ever had a daydream turn into a nightmare? I mean, lying awake at 3 a.m. surrounded by crumpled up reminders of rejection, jigsaw puzzle dictionary where the words do not fit. Hate to see her on another poet's arm, rips my heart out and throws it on the ground. She calls it slam poetry. I ask her not to tell him all my pillow talk like spoken word, invite her back to my place for another sonnet. She declines. Guess I took that poem for granted. Make no mistake, the next time I feel a poem like that on my lips, I will swallow her whole and get lovesick. So I regurgitate perfection with every poem after. I don't think I've ever heard Shocky read erotic poetry before, and I loved it. That was amazing. Oh my God. I hope we hear more of that in the future. Thank you so much for sharing. Do you, you have anything you want to plug coming up, Shocky? No, not, not right now. No. Nah. All right. Well, you can support her in this fabulous anthology. She has a part of the out loud. Um, there's 50 contributors in this book and I'm proud of every single one of them. Well, thank you for being here, Shaki. We're bringing the mommy and daddy language here tonight at Deadpan Dope, but I'm very, I'm very into it. All right, so that is the first round of Deadpan Dope. We're gonna get started with our main event while we're all here. Um, tonight we are featuring uh, my friend and one of my favorite musicians here at Word is Right, Stephen Blaine and I'm gonna read his bio. Stephen Blaine is a pop jazz Americana singer poet in the style of Leonard Cohen, Tom Waits, and Roy Orbison. His new album is entitled The Met. It features 10 newly written songs set in retro cool, the cool 1940s American songbook vibe. The album is also produced by Blaine. During the coronavirus pandemic, he journaled his experiences. One of his lyrics was featured in the article of in Vanity Fair. Among his recent releases are songs related to the pandemic, including a cover of Neil Young's After the Gold Rush. He released a song version of Robert Frost stopping by the woods on a snowy evening in Alfred Noisy's classic poem, The Highwayman, as well as a Passover EP, an inspirational pop ballad called Fly Again. The Huffington Post wrote, stylistically, Blaine fits in the Americana category, but there's more going on in his music than simply Americana. There's a pop influence in there, along with a 1950s rock vibe that gives his sound a unique signature. It's much different from the usual run-of-the-mill most bands turn out today. A Blaine's previous recent album, So New York, Seattle P.I. wrote, so New York is grand. The album is full of vintage jazz pop aromas, giving off tantalizing whiffs of 
You list familiarity similar to the heady music of the 1940s and 50s. Stephen Blaine's voice is deliciously deluxe, full of lush tones. Um, in 2018, Stephen produced an album entitled Motel Blue. The album was recorded in Nashville and produced by Blaine. It features amazing Rachel Horder on many of the songs, fantabulous fiddle Ross Holmes, bassist Kevin Haley, and drummer Frank Levitino. He is very proud of it. It's organic and everything done in one take. Prior to that, Stephen released uh, four other albums, including I Confess, which was produced um, White Heart core member Billy Smiley and recorded in Nashville in his lake where Florida uh, recorded a shed album, The Shed Sessions, both received excellent reviews and airplay on radio stations across the country. Stephen gigs frequently in New York City where he lives. He is a regular busker in Central Park. He also is a cantor and a rabbi and leads high holy services at the bitter end in New York City. He's the founder and dean of JSL. Uh, JSLI and Rabbi of Sin Shalom. So please give a warm welcome to the fabulous feature, Stephen Blaine. Woohoo! That's, 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 that's not, that's only half of it. <laughs> no, <it's>, <laughs> wow, that's a lot of, me. that's a lot of crap in there. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, that's, I read, I read what you emailed me, but it's also a beautiful bio and you should be very proud of your Wow, wow. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll make sure and edit it a little better next time. <laughs> um, thanks so much, everybody, for uh, for being here. It's uh, it's really wonderful. I've made all these new friends online at uh, um, at Word Is Right, and uh, Liz, uh, I, I I met her in person, and I'm looking forward to meeting everybody uh, at the um, at the upcoming poetry get together in a few weeks. Um, so I, I'd like to do a few songs for you that are um well they're they're just i just i just picked them out because i thought they were kind of representative of of my work this is this is from that uh, the newest album that i that i've released it's called the met and um some of you might have heard it before Let's meet at the Met by the bust of Pompeii Wander through ancient Rome, then move on to Marseille We can view the pastels and the art of Monet So meet me at the Met We'll wander through Egypt, she has her own wing With mummies and portraits and jewelry and bling where the temple of Dender is a beautiful thing At the Met, at the Met The horses and knights are posed for a run With muskets and shields in the blistering sun And their helmets and armor weighed about a ton And the battles were bloody and wet Horses and knights are posed for a run With muskets and shields in the blistering sun And their helmets and armor weighed about a ton And the battles were bloody and wet Let's meet at the Met by the bust of Pompeii We can look at some iconic art on the way to the medieval hall where the tapestries stay On a day we will never forget At the Met, at the Met, let's meet at the Met Let's meet, let's meet at the Met <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you so much. So um, those of you that uh, are New Yorkers, maybe you share that, uh, that feeling if you go to the Met. And any of you who are coming here, I hope you'll, you'll allocate a couple hours to go over there because it's just incredible. All right, so uh, that's, that's pretty new. I thought um, this, is, this is old, er. And uh, uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the God business, so sometimes I like to stretch. And this is called Adonai Slept Here. Adonai slept here Had us quite a time When the coast was clear He wasn't so divine He let his long hair down And lit up a joint Talked and talked all night Wondered what's the point He's a traveling man A little odd for sure He's got a friendly smile Sells from door to door he wears a dark raincoat, a fedora hat. He can run a mile in four minutes flat. And I don't know I slept here. I don't know I slept here. Adonai slept here Don't eat no red meat He says it's too unkind He prefers Merlot Helps him to unwind Spends a lot of cash at the shopping mall Spreads a little cheer At the holy wall And I do not slip here says it's going bad he ain't got a say he's the idea man then he goes on his way there's a lot of good that don't see the light oh it won't come again Not without a fight And I don't know I slept here
Thank you so much. Let me uh, let me just fix this window here so I can see everybody a little bit better. Thank you. Thank you. You're very kind. And uh, let's see, this one here. Um, ah, this is something I wrote the other day. It's just just a just a light f fluffy piece I was thinking early Elvis Suddenly you appear, my precious love. You said you loved only me until the day you set me free. You broke my heart. Precious love A woman like you Is truly rare Out of this world Beyond compare All of the things All of the things my dreams Are made of Please believe me when I say I think about you night and day. You will always be my precious love. A woman like you is truly rare. Beyond compare, all of the things that my dreams are made of. Oh, please believe me when I say I think about you night and day, and you will always be. My precious love Oh, yeah, you will always be My precious love Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My precious, my precious love. So... I'll get back on the piano. This is a uh, this is something I wrote a few years ago that I I just kind of loved. I love the chords. I'm not sure what it means. <laughs> Yours, your way, love. 
of heart I well cold blood No pain, no gain I'm in to win Christ's sake I cry a flood Cold blood Warm thighs Wet lips Dark eyes Oh my time No gain, I'm in to win. Christ's sake, I cry a flood. Cold blood, warm thighs, wet lips, dark. Time flies, cold blood. Thank you. How am I doing, uh, Liz? Look at the chat. <laughs> Doing, uh, no, you're doing great. I'm so great. So you got about like 10 minutes left. Oh, well, I have no trouble filling that up. <laughs> this is this is also on that on my my new album. And uh, I think it's it's one of my favorite pieces. I live a life I lived before What if I was aware of my encore And I remember every secret behind the door first glance you didn't see what if your first dance was not with me what if you had not become my destiny what if What if we die with our regrets and there are no more tete-a-tetes and only menthol cigarettes? What if? What 
what if your bed's an army cot and the temperature's too hot what if there ain't no parking spots what die with our regrets there are no more tete-a-tetes and only menthol cigarettes what if what if your bed's an army cot and the temperature's too hot what if there ain't no parking spot what if what if your only suit doesn't fit what if joseph climbed up from the pit what if there ain't nothing else Oh, this is it What if What if What if so much yeah it's such a such a treat to be able to just play these <laughs> it's uh Woo. i think um i think i'll do this is this is just a lesson for everybody <laughs> AC on and then the, the AC's off. And there's nothing worse than playing an attitude instrument. Oh, there's something worse than playing an attitude, having to listen to it. <laughs> there we go. their debut There's always someone writes your review No matter what you think is true There's always someone more than you There's always someone smarter than you There's always someone dumber than you There's always someone knows what to do there's always someone don't have a clue It's absolutely or certainly true There's always someone more than you Someone more than you Someone more Someone hotter than you 
There's always someone colder than you There's always someone, maybe a few You're never ever gonna outdo No matter what you think is true There's always someone more than you You know there's always someone weaker than you There's always someone stronger than you There's always someone making you blue Always someone turning the screw And there ain't a damn thing you can do Cause there's always someone more than you Someone more than you Someone more One more than you Someone more than you Someone more than you So take that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Martin. So, uh, um, got time for one more, Liz, or is that it? Maybe you got time for one more. All right. Well, you know, I, 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 do I, I do I do the beanie blessing after this, or does that do that later? Uh, we'll do the beanie blessing after the second round of open mic. Are you going to sing my favorite Stephen Blaine song? Of course. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I love a bleaker street. On bleaker street, the beats are gone. The homeless one, our pale and wan. But ghosts remain with shoeless feet They like to sing on Bleecker Street On Bleecker Street the teardrops fell And every sigh would cast a spell yeah, All the joints would dig the beat yes, It was cool on Bleecker Street John's Pizzeria still is there so head on over from the square Oh, stop the share The bitter end Still makes some heat On Bleecker Street On Bleecker Street On Bleecker Street There still is yet The only din of much regret But ghosts remain So take a seat Catch a dream on Bleecker Street mm -hmm. John's Pizzeria still is there So head on over from the square the bitter end still makes some heat On Bleecker Street On Bleecker Street On Bleecker Street there still is yet Lonely din of much regret But light shines through so take a seat Catch a dream on Bleecker Street But light shines through so take a seat Catch a dream on Bleecker Street But light shines through, so take a seat Catch a dream on Bleecker Street Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for uh, letting me uh, play and sing some songs for you. A lot of fun. 
that is I was stalking you a little bit on Spotify all day and that is truly my favorite song here's oh, amongst you. all your music but please give a round of applause that was such an amazing set to our feature Stephen Blaine thank you hey Jeff <laughs> thank you thanks very much yeah. thanks for listening it is such a he is magic it is always such a pleasure to hear your music um check him out on spotify soundcloud ig stephen blaine music facebook um you know if we were in a cafe if we were at an in-person open mic we pass the hat around and we'd all put a little money in right and tip our feature so stephen if you have a uh, cash handles venmo paypal cash up bell and you want to share that with folks you can drop that's it that's cool send, and, send it send it to a uh, word is right put that put that link in there a donation okay. for, for word is right oh that that's great. very kind of you so yes if you want to send it to word is right um at word is right you can get marissa there yeah. it's just on our um facebook page um that's very generous of you steven thank you for being with us do you have anything coming up you'd like i have a gig play? i have a gig thursday night in, in uh in um at shrine in harlem that's so awesome. uh, yeah you should come up it's fun nine o'clock it's a great if hang. I where where in Harlem? A shrine is on uh, is about 134th. Just just type it in shrine S H R I N E. It's it, it's a great hang. I mean, really, okay. it's amazing. If I am back in town, which I might be Thursday night, I will happily come up. I will let you know. I might have to still be on Long Island a little longer. Um, until friday but i will um i'll send you a facebook message if i can make cool. it but All thank right. you so much for featuring with us always welcome here um and yeah we will hear the beanie blessing from you later this evening i look forward to that beanie blessing i'm, I'm <laughs> i've got you. it right thank there i'm looking for it okay the rabbi will do our beanie blessing yes be thank you so much Stephen. um awesome so we're gonna wrap up with a little more open mic here tonight if you don't want to read for the second round let me know otherwise we're just going to go in the order we were going and then we'll do the beanie blessing and we'll call it a night so on deck we have terry rose um and up to the mic now he is the host of garage poets he's with our team at word is right he is a boston uh poet and artist and i look forward to meeting him one day and i hope his um, hosting partner, Ethan Mackler, joins us in the future again. I miss hearing playing him on bass. Um, but please welcome to the mic now, Jeff Taylor. Thank you for having me, Lizzie. Yeah, I Thank hope you. um we're you're in New York and I'm in Boston, so we're close enough that I I feel confident that one day we'll we'll be able to meet each other. One day. Read some poems in a live setting. That would be cool. Yes. I mean, we could all go like to New York or something like that. Oh, absolutely. Like I mean, I'm when I'm not Friday at my apartment. Oh, yeah, they have Friday night. I mean, they have something every night now. So, but the Friday night slams are fun. Um, I, I was just I there used, this week. I performed with Jive a few times quite a mm. while ago. So I love I, Jive. I, yeah, I haven't seen him in a very long time. But um, yeah, we, we performed together a few times. He used to drive up to boston and do some shows with us when i had a thing at um, jimmy tingles theater in somerville oh that's that's one yeah jive's great i'm sure i'll see him this weekend at the um block party on saturday um, but he's a great guy he's a good host i'm pretty much living at the cafe when i'm not at my apartment on the upper west side or long island so i pretty much just sublet um be downstairs <laughs> of the cafe but awesome. what do you what what magic do you have for us tonight, Chuck? I've got a, a couple of short ones. The first one I'm gonna do is a poem that I wrote um about my wife before she was my wife when we were like doing like a breakup, makeup breakup kind of thing. Yeah, like I I'm going through a whole bunch of poems because I'm working on a manuscript of kind of small, short narratives and like political poems and things that all kind of weave together. Yeah, this one's called Replace. I chain smoked to replace you. Every thought about pressing my lips to yours. Another cigarette. When I finally drank the butts, in the end of my beer can, 
I quit quitting you. Yeah, that's just a short one. I loved it. Do you have, a, do you have anything else you'd like to share with us tonight? I, yeah, I, I have an, another short one here. And this one is um, it's called Commendation. When we first heard the screaming, it sounded existential. Like the local drunks unleashing agony at the moon. The second scream was more predator victim. Swan crew sprinted towards the unknown. I stood there, the just lit joint in my hand, like I knew we would want it later. A menacing man was trying to wrestle his way into a woman's apartment. He said he had a gun trying to keep us at bay. We found out later he was a war vet having flashbacks. Sarah threw him off her. Kari grabbed him. I stood there with the joint in my hand, following do them down the hill like a theater spotlight. Swan crew repeatedly pushing menacing man against the fence until the cops arrived to slam him into the squad car's door frame as they threw him on the back seat saying, we've got it from here, boys. At the ceremony for the commendation we got from the mayor, Sarah gave us movie passes as a thank you. I took mushrooms and watched Strange Days by myself. Years later, Sarah would tell her version of events to my cousin Ronnie, her husband, on their first date. That's commendation. Wow, oh, those are both awesome pieces. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you. them. Yeah, always good to see you, Jeff. Do you have um, besides Garage Poets, which is every Friday um, at eight PM Eastern Time? Um, do you have anything else coming up you'd like to promote or share? Uh, not at this time. I think the the Garage Poets still might have a a, a live in person show happening. In September, just um, for Bro Brookline Mass Porch Festival, it's I believe is September fifteenth. But um, I, I believe we, we're we're going on at like two p.m. September fifteenth, but Brookline, Massachusetts, if, it, if that's near anybody. Awesome. Well, if you're in that area, please go support Ethan and Jeff and the Garage Poets. Um, I know it'll be a fantastic time. Thank you for being with us, Jeff. Um, always appreciate seeing you and hearing your poetry. Yeah, thank you. All right, so on deck, we got Martin. And back to the mic now, we have Tara Rose. Turn the camera back on, okay. So look what I got. I ordered um, the copy when um, you guys were doing the book launch. Oh, well, thank you so much for supporting it. Appreciate it. Um, I'm so proud of the book. Um, I love I the really book. Am. It's thank great. You. I also got Marissa's book. Awesome. Well, I'm so happy you have that. I birthed a, a couple brain children and they actually came to life. So appreciate the support. I'm going to read your poem in here, but I'm not sure where it is. You, do you know what page it's on? Oh, I found it. Um, I, 42. I, I, Apparently it's on 42. <laughs> I think I have an essay and a prose in there. I'm gonna read the one that looks like it's a, a concrete poem. It's shaped like it's a poetry. I'm a not poetry sure monologue. It's shaped like, but it's shaped like something. <laughs> it's a poetry monologue, but it's not supposed it's not intentionally shaped as anything, but I could have done that subconsciously. But I appreciate that you're gonna read it. Should I read something else? Is that the only um, one you have in here? I have a poem called Other, which is not a poem actually, it's an essay slash poem. And um, that one's really potent. And then the one that's me is not as potent. So it's up, it's up to you, but I'll I appreciate it. that. Which one would you rather have me read? Why don't you read me? Okay. Me. 
Elizabeth Sophia Strauss. I came out, bombs bursting in air, a rather warm Independence Day evening, proudly declaring mine, fighting the strep throat and Billy Rubin light so I could scream from the bluffs of Belle Terre. I am not like the other girls who wanted to run around in floral dresses with ribbons in their hair, flashing Shirley Temple locks for boys to drool over. I've known since I was three, I like my own gender sex. I felt like a tomboy trapped in half a woman's body. Not until 30.5 years around the cancer sun did I realize I'm by gender. Elizabeth Sophia Strauss, accepting who I am on a chilly, what we call spring day. I finally let myself discover my pronouns and gender identity. Half she, half zur, mostly female, mostly gender queer, maybe sometimes male, but I prefer butch. Elizabeth Sophia Strauss, I have no desire at this present time to make amends to my temple. I love my breast and pussy as much as the next woman. I love my long blonde locks that flow in the wind and summer heat naturally. Sir is for my connection to my German ancestors. She is for the body and mind God gifted me. The beanie they rested upon my head, protection. The beanie I rest upon my head now, protection, panku. Oh, thank you for beautifully reading that. See, when you have a brainchild and curate things, you can put whatever you want in a book. <laughs> I appreciate you. One? I was going to read. Yeah, but you can read their poem. If you want. I was going to read hers. Damn it. Go for it. She leave. Okay. Um, hers is on page 132. Going to the page. 132. Mumble, mumble transition. <laughs> Oh, this is a shorty. Wait a minute. Okay. It's 133. Sorry. It's called The Clothes We Wear. What a weird concept that our clothes are meant to express the very parts we choose to hide. Forbidden fruit dressed up in a Tropicana crop top and apple bottom jeans. They tell us we are whatever our birthday suit reveals, but swaddle us in blankets and sheets since birth then wonder why we feel like ghosts. When Halloween becomes the only day we don't wear masks, it's like we've been tricked into treating ourselves as less than. They make the clothes to fit all the curves we've been conditioned to hate. When I protest in sweats and hoodies, they call me words to prove I am anything else, like tomboy, but clearly I cannot be a woman. Like woman is reserved for the pretty ones in pink dresses and high heels. Like pockets are only made to hold masculinity. Femininity belongs in a purse, sealed tight and hidden until it becomes too heavy for our shoulders to bear. When did women become a burden we wear? I say, wear the clothes, take them off. Tell them you define what it means to be you. Anything else is their problem. Thank you. Thank you. That Appreciate you. Both of those from Out Loud Anthology, Red or Green Books. Or I don't know if you have any for sale, but if you do, then you can contact Elizabeth Strauss. Yes, thank you. I have, about, I have about 10 left of the author copies. So appreciate that and that you uh, serenaded me and Shaki. Um, and I wish supporting. you were still here. Hey, here's Yo. Generalissimo. He's got a hey. poem in here too. Hey, Brian. Can I Brian. have one more? I'll find his poem. Oh, sure. I think Brian's the page after mine. So you were 142? Oh, that would be interesting. My poem will be interesting. To be I love the way when, 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 when Terry reads other people's stories, but she has a storytelling. She has that beautiful voice. I love so, when Terry, Terry reads other oh. people's stories. I Brian, got I want to ask you, is Marissa taking your backgrounds and making them her backgrounds? I, I haven't noticed anything like that, but 
I, I think she's done that as a joke to other people in the past, so I can't speak for Marissa. And I'm, um, I, I was just at a live event in Portland, Maine, so I'm very upset that I missed the event. Um, so. uh, well, luckily, it's going to be on YouTube and Facebook, so you can watch his brilliance there. But, you know, I've noticed the last couple of times I vlogged in to host um, for Word is Right that Brian and Marissa's backgrounds are the same. So I didn't know if it was a joke or something um, between you two, because you guys are the um, the birthday twins. Oh, it's a possibility. I, I don't know. You know, I don't, I can't think about that. I, I want to say something to you as a, as a lesbian, deadpan Lizzie. Isn't Terry's hair just incredibly sexy tonight? I love the way that hair looks. It is. I, I didn't want to like embarrass her earlier in the night, but it is very sexy. So, so see, that's it. my job to embarrass people. See, because, because you know, I do that anyways, because I, because I don't have any tact. So, <laughs> oh no you went on a stage at the new york and cafe and read an entire poem about me you have you have no shame in embarrassing your friends <laughs> oh but that was a wonderful poem about you. oh no it is i, I very i love that poem and i, I, I very much appreciated were, when, it it was just i i'm very shy as you uh, know so for me it was but, just like I but when you have when you wear a leather jacket you are the baddest <laughs> i have i get told that in bodegas too and i mm. appreciate that and I also glad it looks bad because then creepy men don't hit at me at two in the morning when I'm like stoned and like getting a bagel because I'm starving after walking home from the poetry cafe. Wait, nuns hit at you? No, men like there's oh, like men. a bodega. Oh, I, oh, oh, I thought nuns. you said I, I thought you said nuns. That, that would be. Over. I've never been hit on by a nun. I've been yelled at them by them, but um, no, like there's a bodega across from my apartment on the Upper West Side and like sometimes I have like the munchies at two in the morning and like men will hit on me and say I look badass in my leather jacket and like scary and I'm like that's good like leave me alone. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> um, did you want to read Brian's poem Terry? I, I looked at the size of this poem this is sizable <laughs> so if you guys are ready for a longish <laughs> Um, Brian poem then I will otherwise if you want to give somebody else um a chance I mean does anyone mind if Terry reads it or do we want to I'd love to hear it yeah, okay right. I'm gonna go when a kiss feels like a life exists in a movie by Generalissimo Brian Franco you leaned in to kiss me and somehow our noses didn't crash into each other Somehow the way your lower lip and upper lip managed to grab and release my lower lip seemed as if a famous movie director had choreographed our first kiss. I felt my heart beating against the Pima cotton blue and white striped polo dress shirt I wore beneath a red cashmere sweater. Your hand was on my shoulder and you rubbed it across my barely there 20 year old chest and commented in a soft voice, Mmm, I love the feel of cashmere. Then you wrapped your 23-year-old arms around me and as you pressed your soft lips against mine and as time stood, st stood still. I'm trying not to mess this up. I felt your hands travel down my back across my butt when you stepped back and smiled at me and said, if you want to stay a little longer, you can. You were older than me, and my only other experience with a guy was this guy in front of me, in line, at a grocery store, with whom I had an innocuous, small talk conversation, who then walked up to me after I got into my car. He was gorgeous, with perfect hairy runner legs. He started a conversation as I put my groceries in the trunk. I hope I'm not wrong, but I don't live far from here if you want to come by. I didn't realize we were flirting with each other by simply having a conversation. We started kissing at his place and he was overzealous with his tongue, which I wasn't too fond of, but it didn't take too long for two skinny college boys to find their way to naked. Every touch from his fingertips and hands felt like my body was custom made for him. It was as if he was made of electricity. He was my first. There were things I needed to learn. He became my tutor. I was a willing student. We met there once or twice a week at his place, which lasted for about two months. 
We'd always get naked within a few minutes of my arriving and stay undressed my entire visit as if we were nudists. I bought Paul Young's Secret of Association. I put the cassette in his stereo system on side two. The first song was, I want to tear your playhouse down. The whole side two was a soundtrack for a sex romp. I think we cared for each other, but it was the eighties. We were closeted and there was no chance of us continuing without blowing up our lives. When you and I met, you were a grad assistant to a professor. I made an appointment with you to help me with something I didn't understand. Afterwards, you suggested we grab some dinner sometime. Again, another time I didn't realize I was flirting. I could definitely feel my heart beating against my preppy knit shirt as I sat opposite your desk. And when you took me out to that healthy food restaurant then paid the bill, I was too naive to realize we were on a date. It was a breezy, cool, early spring Florida evening. You suggested we take a walk in a small nearby park. You asked me if you could kiss me beneath a blooming magnolia tree. It was a soft, gentle kiss, but felt more passionate than any kiss my previous sort of not boyfriend had planted on me. You asked me to follow you back to your place, which I didn't hesitate to do. You were never overzealous with your tongue or sloppy or a sloppy kisser. Our secret six month tryst laid the groundwork for how I learned to treat future romantic partners with respect. You never pushed me for sex or to do things I didn't want to do. We had stopped seeing each other by November. You finished your graduate degree shortly after, then moved across the country. It should have broken my heart and sent me into a severe depression, but you had taught me I was capable of eventually having a real relationship with another man, even though it would take me several, several years till I moved to New York City in 93 to live as an out gay man and have a full-fledged relationship. I don't think we were in love, though I might have thought we were. We both lived separate lives outside of us. Grocery store guy was more of a dalliance, the start of a new learning curve. What we were were more than even thought it was just as secret. I messed that up. <laughs> I don't want to go back. <laughs> and we were never... Whoop. And we were never met now, and we never met or talked again. Yes. <laughs> it felt as if our story was a secret of vignettes in a movie directed by a not yet famous director before his first film would change the life of a closeted gay 20 year old college kid, desperately in need of the kind of knowledge and experience to recognize his true self and live a full life. That was hard to read, Brian. <laughs> you're killing me over here. I'm trying. I'm well, not gonna, well, you're, you're, killing, you're, I, telling I, me, you're killing me because you look so sexy, you might cure me. I thought you read it beautifully. I thought you read all the pieces beautifully, Terry. Thank you. you. you Terry, you did a good job. We I, should just have Terry do the audio version, the audio book version of Out Loud. Oh, the whole thing, yes. Oh, now you're you're really gonna hear some tongue twisters. <laughs> no, I know. No. I might know maybe I know a harpist we can get to back her up. I mean, if you and Marissa want to do that, but you'd have practice. Like it wouldn't make you do it in one fell swoop. Like you'd have a recording. If I mess it up. Session. I get a chance to start. Start. <laughs> but you didn't mess it up tonight. I thought you did beautifully. And Brian's poem is absolutely lovely and shocky. And I'm proud of what Marissa let me put in the book. So, I'm actually most proud of my editor's note in this and the person that it's about um really appreciates it and i'll see her later this week but thank you for sharing that um by terry's book the chameleon chronicles if you haven't already there it is somebody Beautiful. that that went out of here already was interested in my book i don't know if he's gonna buy it i hope he does. hey terry yes is my is my uh blurb in your book what you wrote about you mean the review the review yeah. yes can you read it uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for asking you to do that, Lizzie. But I, I like the review. No, it's fine. You have. I have your. Um, I have all the reviews of mine, which include Brian's and Kundalini. Okay, I really work hard when I try to do reviews for people because I think that you have to capture who they are as a person, 
and what you feel about their work. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was beautiful what you wrote. Thank you for, and I'm sure Terry appreciates what you wrote for her. I have um, to turn well, the light on because it's really it's hard. My, well, 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 you know, we don't have to. We don't have to worry about that, Terry. That's fine. Terry. What is that? Behind, oh my God, I love that. Whatever that is behind you right now. That's my drawing for the for the dental dentist, the torture. Oh, I love that poem. The that's tortured black. dentist. <laughs> one of, that is one of my favorites well, of yours. I while love Terry that. finds the review, I will. We'll cause <laughs> we can come back to it. Why don't we hear from our pal Martin Parker? Right here. There he is. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you. It's great stuff tonight. I thought I'd read this elegy that I don't think I've read here. Some of you may have heard it elsewhere before, but I've been thinking about it uh, lately. This is for my best friend in middle school. It's called Victory. You float upon subconscious streams that can make it hard to breathe when sounds of jazz inflected dreams start to swing on a time warp breeze. So did the man whose prejudice ever let you take the wheel? You standing up by sitting down to express the way you feel. In front of the stand around midnight time, I'd be feeling the invisible drizzle us blowing the tones of a restful rhyme and then making them gentlemen sizzle. And you'd be choosing the clearer value of seduction amid the tones, near where we'd weathered a flying tantrum about a tempo wandering from home. And we'd be checking out the trap having wriggled out of class in a room of silently sleeping sheaths full of vibrant glittering glass. And you'd be asking how you figured while we faked the sounds of seagulls, a squawking loudly with such vigor, spirits soaring like the eagles. And I'd be checking out the rhythm of the conging groove you pitching while, ham while hearing your sister hammering hickories, getting them ready for the kitchen. And I'd be catching the patchwork play for a greeting I'd solely witness. You laughing at them dancing eggs with a passionate yen for citrus. And you'd be winging that equide sphere that act more like a football by hanging eerily in the air like the echo of a footfall. And now you're jamming on that train, fingers jumping with jive and skill and notes of all them tunes you shared still be sliding through my skull to echo, to echo there like yours did on stage, knuckles rhapsodizing with speed, though as in rumor you submerge to the beat of a galloping steed that resonates in my soul, brother. I never had any truer friend, and in the memories of another, You'll triumph in the end. And this is in loving memory of Victor White, 1964 to 1982. Your elegies are always so lovely, and I love how you memorialize people. So thank you for sharing that thank with you. us. Always a pleasure to have you in our space and your energy. Uh, please give him a follow um, on Instagram, Park Quillian. Uh, get his merchandise and um, buy his books. He's got some books out. So, and he's part of many anthologies. So um, please support him. Thank you so much for being with us, Martin. And um, unless Terry wants to read the review from Brian. Um, yeah, I, I have it. Oh, am I, am I unmuted? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. So um, the, in the Chameleon Chronicles, words never spoken, Terry Rose Jertson is a master of pulling real life narratives from her memory and making it poetic. Oops, that wasn't yours. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Terry's stark honesty and self-effacing sense of humor will keep your mind rolling and give you added strength to roll through tough times in your life. Um, you know what? 
I pulled up the wrong thing. <laughs> because I, I did the, the back of the book cover is um, it's dark color like maroon and then the light color uh, type on there. Um, they made the type very small. So it's kind of hard to read it. So I, I'm looking for the actual document and I have the document, but here it is, here it is, I got it. Terry Rose Durson starts the Chameleon Chronicles Words Never Spoken with a matter of fact introduction that states, dare I say, burn this book after reading. This debut collection of poetry is part journal slash part confessional slash part I am what I am slash part after the past happens, we can learn from it. <laughs> it's a page turner of poetry and prose that pulls no punches. Some of her poems are graphically presented against her photography and are, and are or are accompanied by paintings and illustrations laden with emotions that the words express. I promise this is a book that is easily read in one sitting and one you'll read over and over again. Terry's stark honesty and self-effacing sense of humor will keep your mind rolling and give you an added strength to roll through tough times in your life. So then that's signed Brian Franco, poet, poet workshop facilitator, host of Cafe Generally, Simo Open Mic, author of everything I think is all in my mind. Oh, so lovely review. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for supporting our community. Please buy her book that she just read that lovely review from uh, Chameleon Chronicles. Brian, uh, did you want to, what? Yeah, I'm going to read what I wrote in Emily's workshop last okay. week, which was about um, the tarot cards. So where is it? Okay, go ahead. So the first was from the lover's card. The most foolish thing a person can believe in is the folly of love. The word lover is not a dirty word. To be a lover is less about carnal activity and more about breathing the same air and listening. It is about knowing the difference between hearing and listening. Two people can be lovers without ever touching when they share emotions and accept faults, when they have a relieving laugh after a good cry. It is the moment, it is like the moments when both the sun and moon exist in a sky. To be a lover is about realizing no one is ever perfect, that imperfection is the definition of true beauty. Um, the second was, I think, the sun card. Think of the sun as a piece of glitter. The sun always shines somewhere when the moon is present somewhere else. It, all, it is always night somewhere when the sun blazes somewhere else. Every star that exists in the mighty universe always sparkles in an atmosphere somewhere else in the universe. The vastness of everything visible from telescopes is only vast because we are able to realize our existences are tiny in comparison to other realities and what is real to other beings whose existences we have yet to confirm is that our sun is but a sparkle in their sky. Um, this is, I think, the fate card. Why bookies and fortune tellers exist. What others call luck, I call fate. What others call misfortune, I call fate. What is beyond our control, I call fate. When I dig in to achieve a goal, is that goal my fate? What others might call failure or success, I call fate. Failure and success are words we use to measure what fate decides for us at any given moment in our lives. But life does not, does not provide us with a wheel of fortune to spin where we can win a trip to the future or lose a turn. Then again, to believe in fate is proof in anyone's ability to believe in anything. And uh, this was, I think it was the two of swords or something like that. The S at the at the end of words, move, uh, take the S at the end of words and move it to the wall. Every sword that cuts, that draws blood, that dismembers, that kills, eventually becomes dull. Its owner may decide to polish it, remove the dried blood, buff it till it shines, display it on a wall for others to ooh and ah at its grandeur. Its blade lacks sharpness. It is no longer utilized for its forged purpose. It may no longer cut, 
draw blood, dismember, kill, but it will always be a sword. Thank you. You did some nice work at Fincabulary. Um, thank you for sharing that. And yes, please go support uh, Fincabulary, which is another great platform um, I've hosted and Brian has hosted um, for poetry. And uh, Trisha does some great uh, features and open mics there. So thank you so much for sharing that. And also Brian. buy Emily's any... book. And yes, buy um, Armful of Poppies. It's a really lovely book. She's a part of Red or Green Books as well. And uh, the next 10, is that what you guys called yourselves? We are the next 10 right now. The next 10, yeah. Um, so thank you for sharing that with us and um, continue to support the next 10 and the poets in the community. All right, well, it has been a great night here at Dead Pando. I wanna thank everyone who read and came to support Stephen in our community. Um, Stephen did have to leave a little early, but hopefully I'll see him later this week. Um, so I'm actually going to read The Beanie Blessing, which I haven't done in a very long time. We close out our time together, staring up at the same sky, whether the sun kisses down on your gentle face, the cotton candy clouds begin to swirl in the early evening, the crescent moon fades in as the constellations begin to dance throughout the night. We all look up the same sky. Thank you for blessing the sky, soil beneath our feet and our family with your presence and art. Thank you for taking the time to create. Thank you for holding space. May you squirt out poems, kitty style in dreamland. May we always have beanies to keep us warm and stylish. This has been the Dead Tan Dope Tuesday open mic with the Words Right hosted by me, Dead Pan Lizzie the Beanie God. On behalf of our community, I bid you adieu until next time. Beanie blessings. <laughs>